بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله In the name of Allah the gracious the merciful peace and blessings be upon Prophet Muhammad welcome to the second session Welcome to the second session of this conference the Kyle second annual conference this session just like the other three consists of two elements one presentation by keynote speaker this paper will be read or given by Tawakkul Karman and then 15 minutes for discussion about the topic at hand and then a session will be held just like the one in the morning for a panelists and specialists we will begin with the first topic of the second session of the gender issue with the remarks of Tawakkul Karman. As it is known, Karman is the first Yemeni and Arab woman to win the Nobel Prize. She is a political and human rights activist and she is a co-founder for the organization of journalists without borders and we give the floor now to Tawakkul Karman to speak to us for about 30 minutes you have the floor Peace and blessings of Allah be upon you all. I greet you all and I greet all these struggling women struggling for peace and freedom. Ladies and gentlemen, no topic is simple or complicated such as the relationship between man and woman. There are several discrepancies or rather conflicting points, love and hate, submission and rebellion, but it is the most sustainable and attractive relationship. Saint-Simon, the French philosopher, says the social person is man and woman. So it is important for everybody, men and women, to admit that life will not go on without them both. Men cannot live away from women and women cannot do that either without the men. Despite the clarity of this fact, however, for many reasons, the relationship of man and woman is somehow contradictory in perspectives. Some lean toward extremism, some lean toward adamancy. Between these two, there are, there are those who struggle for a better life for man and woman without any discrimination. Today, in my presentation, I will try to shed the light on the role of the human values such as love, freedom, equality, dignity, cooperation in making the relationship between both genders a normal and a positive one. Historically speaking, the relationship between men and women has been through many faults. Woman was considered part of the ownership of man, such as a house, and religions tried to stop this deterioration 
and dealing with uh, woman as a human being, not as a r source of the sin or the devil. However, the interpretation of the religious clerics and philosophers did not help for the continuation of resolving this problem. This path of liberating woman from slavery and saving her from those exclusionary perspectives. We can say that those interpretations and opinions have kept those unfair ideas and unrealistic thoughts of women to continue. Those insult the woman and call on men to be careful toward women. I can uh, speak to you about some of those philosophers' points of view. Woman is the source of all evil, according to Socrates. Aristotle says male by nature is a source of dominion and woman is deficient. And it is said to woman that you have eaten from the forbidden tree and thus you have destroyed the image of God. Augustine, who was a Christian priest, says, O oh man, you are the master and the woman is your servant. This is the will of God. Schopenhauer, who is a German philosopher, says, woman is an animal that should be hit and imprisoned by man. Many Salafis also say that woman is corrupt by nature and corrupting to others. Abbasi was a Shiite cleric, says woman is deceptive by nature. Martin Luther says woman is as a nail that is dug in the wall. And Tawfiq al-Hakim, who is an Arab author, says if woman is trialed by uh, ignorance, then it is a big problem. So basically the culture of society is to be shed light on. If we open the floor for the popular proverbs, show the opinions of a given people. Now we will speak about the culture of people on women, which is an experience summary for women in history. We have proverbs from the world. All agree that woman is one thing, devil or evil or Satan. A German proverb says the devil would Anything that the devil could not do, a woman is able to do. A Bulgarian proverb saying, Satan is Satan, but woman supersedes him in the devil activities. An English proverb says, a woman is needed to overcome the devil. Salvadorian proverb says, even the devil is not even similar to woman in deception. A Brazilian one says, a woman does what Satan or the devil cannot. An American one says, woman knows more than Satan does. An Arab proverb says, women are a source of all devilish activities. A Persian one says, women are the sound and the voice of devil. And another American proverb says, women are the source of all evil. If you needed more proverbs to be more disappointed, you can read the book of women for many Kashmir. This is an important book so that we know the historical injustice against women worldwide. We are not to clarify the mistakes in those proverbs that lack 
the simplest of in simplest of the heritage are unachievable except on the ruins of men. According to British author, sociologist Anthony Giddens, in his book, he said that there is a belief that men are responsible for the exploitation of women and they are benefiting from that. Some who are of a radical point of view look at violence against women. Thus, the violence against women and all other acts are part of the system and not rather an individualistic behavior or isolated behavior. And here Giddens continues that among other phenomena that deepen gender inequality is what we see in our daily interactions such as the listening and the interrupting and the woman feeling afraid in public places. This view, extremist view toward man, has called for the return of women to the house. In this context, many theories have come about, such as the natural differences theory that shows dividing work between men and women to be done on a biological basis. An American scholar sees that the most beneficial is for women to focus on their house chores while men work outside. No doubt that many religious groups in the Arab and Muslim world are happy with this if the calls for women to go back to the house will not stop, then we will continue to see these trends. And your role as a woman is different from that of man. Such discriminatory calls that did not stop contributed in making man and woman enemy of one another and this is should be this should be rectified because by the end of the day man and woman are the human being that cannot live inseparable from one another the relationship of man and woman under the value system. The relationship is affected by many elements. We have mentioned some, such as religion, culture, economic situation and circumstances, culture and law. However, the relationship between both is still among the most relations that should be assessed and evaluated to be improved. Many a times the relationship between both is bad because of lack of communication and each side not understanding the needs of the other and uh, to be empathetic with the other side. Some of the ways to bring about stability and fairness is the issue of human values. As we speak of them, we should instill this as a term of reference among others to deal with a relationship that is simple and complicated at the same time, which is the relationship between man and woman or the relationship of man and woman. Some may ask, what about faith? What about religion? Okay. We're not excluding the faith. As it is known, religions are 
a basic source of values, but definitely speaking, we cannot trust some unfair interpretations of the texts of this faith, which is hazardous to having an equal footing relationship between both. We remind that there are real differences between the text and each one of us interpreting the text. So none of us can claim that their own interpretation of the text is exactly this and that his point of view embodies the purpose that is meant and intended by Allah. To take the issue of justice, for example, is the core of Islam. It is a shield against any man injustice toward woman or vice versa. However, this shield is not impregnable unless people understand this value and its centrality in Islam and all uh, faiths and philosophies. Justice is the main objective of all prophets. As Allah says, we have sent our messengers with clear signs and we have sent down with them the book and the balance so that people will judge with justice. So justice, according to the Quran, is an absolute value, not a relative one. So it is full justice between man and woman, between Muslim and non-Muslim, between the citizen and non-citizen. And here Ibn Taymiyyah expressed that when he said justice is a duty to everybody, upon everybody, and in all situations, in all cases. This is what Ibn Qayyim has said, and injustice is forbidden, absolutely forbidden, and it is not allowed under any circumstances. So justice as a human value is something sought by all people irrespective of their colors and faiths. It does not allow giving all the rights to men, neither giving all of them to the women. So if these values of justice are not instilled in society, then we will continue to have problems. It is important, therefore, to emphasize the importance of human values to improve the relationship between both genders. This is the most safe way so that both will enjoy a better life. And let's take yet another value, which is the value of love. The value of love gives man and woman an ability to withstand daily challenges. The importance of love in this context is that it is multifaceted because love in one of its meanings is the love for good to everybody and in other meaning man and woman are in a situation where each decides to love the other and to love goodness for humanity at large. That means that each one of them decided to come closer to the true happiness. Another value, which is equality. It is indeed a sublime human requirement which should be sought by all men and women. We here say that men who accept or welcome themselves to be discriminated or rather uh, lift up, lifted up higher than the women, one day they will be also be discriminated against. The In France, we saw a discussion after the revolution, is woman a full citizen or not by the elite? Can she vote as a candidate or as a voter or not? This discussion stayed on for a long time and the French woman did not get this right except in 1934 or 43. 
Ironically speaking, we in the Arab world nowadays discuss these things. These discussions conducted in Europe are being cloned in the Arab region nowadays and in the Muslim world. We see those who make forbidden equality and they stand against the rights of people, especially the dignity and freedom of women, citing that these are sabotage attempts. Equ these values, such as equality and citizenship, are a main foundation of justice and two standards of equality. This is against the will and wisdom and justice of Allah, and this is what the Quran calls that when Allah says, woe to those who are unfair, when they want something for themselves, then they are fair, and when they need, when others need something from them, they are unfair and they shortchange others. Freedom, therefore, which is so important, and it means formulating a mature relationship between both. Those women and men who are free are more able to form this balanced and positive relationship. Contrary to those are those who lost their freedom to choose. Always those who lose their freedom and ability to choose, always their relationship and decisions are flimsy and fragile. Those who uphold freedom and defend freedom are the ones who are more able to defend the causes of society and facing the authorities who are despotic and dictators. In general, the freedom in any society and obtaining it reflects positively on men and women and it is reflected on the relationship of man and woman with one another. So the most important relationship which is the link between both pillars of society is the most significant issue. For many years where uh, despotism ruled, we can imagine that in each and every one of our, our countries, for those many years, man was subjected to many violations because he has lost that sense and woman was also subjected to the same violations. Indeed, a double violation because there is despotism from the authority and despotism from man. This has made the relationship of man and woman as a complex subservience and such a relationship is not healthy. Either that or a relationship of a struggle and conflict. Each society that lives in such kind of relationship will not be healthy. In the latest decades and because of certain laws, we saw another kind of servitude or slavery being deeply rooted in the societies. In the latest decades, because of the market power and authority, another kind of uh, violation of woman that is turning her into a cheap commodity. Surprisingly, this comes under the banner of freedom and under the pretext of freedom. Freedom cannot be uh, on the other side of facing justice. Freedom is, freedom is dignity. And if this were to be continued, we will see more exploitation such as when we heard by Laura from the Italian parliament who said there's a relationship between making women a commodity and violence against women. There's a, a link 
Italy has so many commercials uh, of women who are naked. Everything is sold through the naked bodies of women. You, therefore, either be a woman in uh, the uh, house, working in the house, or you become a cheap commodity uh, to be used in commercialism. So you can do whatever you want with this commodity. The solution is that transforming woman from man to commodity and an ad or a commercial will not affect woman negatively alone, but also negatively affects man because with time man loses a lot of his values and his respect to himself and we will end up with a society that violates freedom and dignity. My, the approach of this issue and others dealing with gender is among the human, from a human value point of view, will help us to stop this war against a human being which is violating his very own dignity and undermining his freedom. Making woman a commodity make, makes man also a commodity. And with the passage of time, we will see further deterioration. Also, it is important to emphasize that the relationship between man and woman should be based on respect and cooperation. This will not come about as long as those who think of excluding the other, if they still look condescendingly to the other or thinking through a logic that alienates the other side to bring about dignity and freedom. So we have to go back to our human values so that the most important peace in life will be realized, which is peace between man and woman. This is the beginning of the path to realize peace in the world. Thank you. Peace and blessings be upon you all. Um, th thank you very much to Tawakul to Karaman for this uh, uh, call to end the war on man. And we have 25 minutes for uh, discussion. If anybody has intervention or question, the microphone is here, is at hand for the volunteers, uh, please, on both sides and in the middle. And uh, Dr. Kamal will answer the questions within the allocated 15 minutes. Um, I'm going to set the time here to make sure that we keep uh, to the time. Who is going to actually moderate? Shall I choose? OK, I'll start with women, obviously. OK, go ahead. Oh, not you then. OK. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll get back to you. Assalamu uh, alaikum. I'm very happy uh, to hear your speech, and I think that all the attendants here, everybody here, actually were happy. And we, we're always happy to hear you speak. Uh, I have got a question and a comment. Do you think where, sh where do you think we should start? Should we start with the laws? the public policy perhaps exert bring pressure to bear or we start with the upbringing the education the school or perhaps with the influential people in society or perhaps we should uh, attach importance to the benefits if we say we need equality and the rest of it what is noticed that the older generations we never actually i'm talking about my country egypt anyway uh, my father nor my father my grandfather or my husband have never had them actually say anything uh, about the lack of equality 
they don't even talk about the subject. They live, we live our lives in a very spontaneous manner, and nobody feels whether they are suffering injustice or not. But for the time, I'm sorry, we've got 15 minutes. What's your question? Where should we start? This is the question. Yes, those people uh, in, in Morocco and everywhere in the world do not feel that they have a problem. Where did they get, get these ideas? Uh, and we can propagate them. Okay, I'm going to talk about three uh, aspects where we should start as women, where we should start uh, for men, and also where we should start as a state. Uh, uh, women, when they want to start the battle towards the human values, when she struggles for equality, she's actually struggling for equality for the whole society, freedom, of society and the dignity of society, so she's struggling for human values. When women start uh, on this road, they should start with herself. Her self-confidence, first and foremost, is the one that actually will open the scope for her towards achieving the overall objective she's struggling for and her own individual objectives. So start with yourself as a woman and then uh, and then we you start so to turn to your family if uh, w women have the confidence of the families then she be armed with this kind of confidence and the faith and belief in her cause then she will find a society that will embrace her and she will lead it forward this is my conviction on the basis of my own personal experience and also on the Arab uh, women leadership in Arab revolutions, the Arab society in all, starting with the most uh, conservative one in Yemeni, there was actually embraced women and pushed women forward and accepting her leadership because women came out in the street with full confidence and armed with the confidence of her uh, family. Uh, this is for women. As, as for men, also start with yourself, I would say. Have confidence in yourself and have the belief that no women are competing with you. They're not going to take anything from you. Have confidence in your family. And push your daughter, your wife forward. Uh, give her that opportunity uh, to save you and society as well. Women today uh, raise the slogan that they are the saviors of the countries, of the societies, of humanity uh, in general. There are a lot of women from the Arab Spring. There has n obviously it's an end to the role of the victim. So you should support your sister, your daughter, your wife, all of them, help them. I feel proud, honestly, uh, in the Arab Spring, and particularly in Yemen, when women would come out to the, uh, the square, the women feel uh, that they are missing something, men, when the, the wives are not there or the daughters are not there. So society, their family was a main supporter. And don't think that would be rejected by society or society would work against it. On the contrary, if you support women, she would receive the support from society, and society will push her forward. And I repeat, the revolutions of the Arab Spring, without this kind of uh, society embracing it, you wouldn't find women in the leadership. They were embraced by society because she had confidence in herself, and you had confidence in her. As for the state, and now we're talking about the transitional um, stages in the uh, countries of the Arab Spring, uh, all countries were trying to reform the what was corrupted in the past uh, due to lack of equality between men and women. And, and this is the most important thing, really. What you said is basically the constitutions and laws which actually endorse the equal rights uh, for citizens. And now I'm talking about an equal citizenship between women and men. I don't want any discrimination and constitution that citizens should be equal before the law in all rights and all duties, women, be they women or men. The constitutional articles that secure all those rights 
without any additions, whether adding all this kind of rhetoric that the women are equal to men. No, I wanted actually equality between men, and this is a constitutional article, uh, should be in the Constitution, and perhaps it should be followed, or supposedly followed by laws, um, that the articles which the uh, provisions that allow women to participate in public affairs uh, the women suffered uh, in fact in a double fashion from political oppression and also religious ones for the wrong fatwas targeting women and also the from societal oppression so there must be positive discrimination for women which would give women the equal opportunities equality in opportunities in the sense, for example, that I refuse that women would have special allocated seats in parliament or certain closed um, circles for her. And I, I'm asking for women to have a 50% equal opportunities for women in the lists of candidates given to the, the street and the street would, would actually, people would choose uh, who they want. So give women the right to have an equal opportunity for her to reach the public domain and to work in elected institutions and appointed institutions should be a percentage. This is for some time until uh, women actually have a foothold because she has proved herself as a revolutionary, as a leader of one of the most difficult types of political action, that's the revolution. Now she has to prove herself as a leader in public affairs, in the uh, in, uh, in managing transitional uh, periods. Uh, the, uh, that's not possible without laws and constitutions, regulations securing that right. Thank you very much. The problem facing women is actually women, the, uh, within women themselves, because the, our sister struggles for defending women's rights, uh, they're looking for what they lost in the home uh, uh, under the media, because there is in the home there's darkness in the house. When women talk about exclusion of women by men, this is the one is actually women actually bring up those men who are exclusionists who actually instill this idea of exclusion. So you are bringing up those men and then in the later on they practice this exclusion. They have to teach the children and instill in them this idea of equality. So the beginning should start from the home and not in the media. When women actually uh, bring up their children on equality between men and women, and when they are children, later on there is not going to be any problem. The question, who said that uh, upbringing women is the task of women only? Who said that? Who said that it is only exclusively the job or the role of the woman? This education upbringing is a role carried out by men and women equally. If one is lost, then the other one will make up. But the education is mainly on the burden of women. So we should focus on that aspect for equality between women. Women themselves, uh, they actually discriminate in between women and men. I agree with you because we are in traditional societies which made the role of women confined not only uh, whether it's inferior or not, uh, just saying that this is your role, um, original role, to bring up the children. And then supposedly, supposedly this, uh, although this role should be for men and women, but actually you, what you're saying is right. We should actually bring up our children on respect for mutual respect and equality, and that there's no difference between them. We should support them all uh, in order to carry out, uh, face the concerns and the problems of the country. When half of our population is marginalized, then our countries actually suffered from oppression. All the oppression we suffered in the past, a number of reasons, one of which is that the women, that the uh, with, uh, premeditatedly, uh, we saw uh, how that uh, the oppressors were scared uh, when women come out in the streets. And I'll give you an example. We in Yemen, we had Ali Abdullah Saleh the former president, when women came out in the street, he was actually in a state of terror. He was terrified, uh, uh, indescribable. He met with the scholars. He had three, he gives three speeches, telling women that you have to go back to your homes. 
because it's our it's against religion for you to speak to hear for people to hear voice and should not mix with men and actually used mosques for that purpose he recruited and used mosques affiliated with the state to convince women before men to go back to her home uh, and what how did the women respond Yemen respond to Ali uh, you uh, pack up the women actually will bring you down and therefore who actually brought him down was real fear and the uh, is actually was a, a stumbling block before any constitutional amendments uh, endorsing equal rights uh, for the citizen the rights of the citizen man and woman and then we it was a stumbling block before education health I made the majority of Yemeni population are illiterate because he was scared of women who brought him down. Consequently, the revolutions of the Arab Spring, had women not taken part of them, wouldn't have lost Mubarak, Ben Ali, Gaddafi, Ali Abdullah Saleh, or any Bashar al-Assad, hopefully in the future. Women were the cornerstone. So the issue is basically boils down to faith and belief in the cause and upbringing for men and women and finally uh, in this respect uh, actually and i don't want to talk about myself but uh, with god's grace and with the help of my parents and the support from my husband i wouldn't be here among you now uh, their support their belief their upbringing is no different between you and your brother the concern should be the same your struggle should be the same. Your values should be the same. Uh, this one and a lot of women with me without that would have believed in freedom, equality and justice and our duty actually to carry out this mission. Thank you very much. Uh, maybe take one from that side for equality and justice. Uh, take a, a questioner from that side. Okay, that gentleman there and then the lady. Uh, thank you very much. And, uh, and I must not be, I'm a, a psychiatrist, I know that there are behavioral deviations and among young people when the education of bringing your women are left to the mother without the father. And I've got many examples. And this is documented actually scientifically. I'm concerned with the attitude formation the developing uh, children's attitudes and we know that the man the child becomes selfish uh, for in the first weeks of life not the first years of life the first weeks of life so the question by the lady where should we start I we should focus on education on upbringing uh, and awareness the position the two taken by the child to the parents it develops actually in the first few stages, in the first stages of life. Uh, this needs uh, awareness uh, and also training, actual programs. Uh, I've got your idea, you're right. But this is an intervention, not a question, so we take another one there. Well, that was not a question. Uh, women, thank you very much and for the, your effort. And uh, we say that we see, consider that the a problem always starts from the curricula, religious education curricula for women and, and, and wet men. So these actually entrenching this idea with instilling into the men and the education, and that's what they inherit, that you are the man, you are the dominant, and she is subordinate to you. Um, they do not instill into them the idea of equality or justice between them. This is a problem that these religious scholars are a problem. Although we have religious scholars in Islam, I've suffered a lot. And uh, with God's grace, I have 13 uh, institutes in Hama in Syria. The main suffering I had from two directions. The first is that the scholars, religious scholars, the extremists, and the other form, the Syrian intelligence. Uh, well, so this is the question, what should we do then? Nothing, lead a revolution, a genuine one, against op political oppression and despotism and religious oppression under the pretext of fatawa, edicts, religious edicts, uh, the erroneous ones, and against the social 
um, uh, oppression, customs, wrong customs, traditions, which are, do not do justice to women, nor to men, actually. Our slogan, our motto that the Arab Revolution, Arab Spring Revolution, not come against those political oppressors, it came against them and against their tools. They used religion as a tool to stay in power and they used customs and traditions to stay in power. And women, the women who struggled and sacrificed for freedom, dignity, justice, democracy, and equality, and governance would not accept anything less under any pretext whatsoever. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much, uh, to Dr. Karman, for uh, this um, insightful um, speech and this discussion. And I apologize once again for not being able to take all your questions and give the opportunity for her to answer them. Now we'll have a, a break for a short break for Asr prayers and coffee break for 15 minutes, and then we'll come back to start the seminar about the issues of uh, gender, men and women. So we'll see you very shortly at in a quarter of an hour. Thank you very much.